Welcome to the Vintage Sports Car Club 1962 Club Film. And we start off at Bewley for the driving tests. It was wet at Bewley, but the selection of cars was still quite interesting. The Bewley Museum has been the home of old motor cars for many years now and therefore we are, as a club, much welcomed. Also, amongst the driving tests, we had a Concorde d'Elegance. Every sort and condition of motor car was there. All of them pre-1930. And there's a very fine Edwardian. Lady Montague gave out the prizes. And Tim Carson was there to receive congratulations for a meeting well run. Lady Montague was most interested in some of the older motor cars. But then the competitors set off for a run in the countryside. That's Wing Commander Buckle in his Lancia. And Bernard Kane leading out the parade, followed by Dudley Gagan, both in Bugattis. But then it was over to the driving tests. Still the rain was falling, the ground was very wet and very slippery. But the Edwardian had no problems. Dudley Gagan in the Bugatti, dressed for the part, but not keeping any drier. The way to keep dry was to get yourself an Alvis 1250 saloon. Light cars were much in evidence. Austin 7s were very popular. But then as a contrast, a Bentley. The length of the wheelbase doesn't help in some of the tests. Philip Mann discusses the day with Club Secretary Tim Carson. There's a man with a puncture and Barry Clark coming to the rescue. And I don't think that's a puncture. With a vintage club, you're never short of advice and help. Doesn't always work out, but there's always advice and help. Still the rain fell, but the aged Morris Bullnose is quite happy to complete its tests.
Bernard Kane back on the road to close another enjoyable day's vintage competition. And it's over to Alton Park, June, and one of the main race meetings of the year. Fine weather brought out all the folks in the paddock. Austin 7 specials were much in evidence. And there was a lot of fettling, but not with the ice cream man. He seems to have dozed off. After a tour of the circuit, an ERA has its brakes adjusted. Some of the record breakers from the Montague Motor Museum were there. Napier Railton, Sunbeam, MG. A lot of very famous record breakers. And there is the Napier Railton, here for a demonstration run. And the Sunbeam, land speed record car. Then we had a demonstration of some of the faster cars. The Napier Railton. Mephistopheles, the 21 litre Fiat. And a beautiful Benz. Sunbeam. And the Banata Hassan. Mephistopheles comes back into the paddock, followed by the sunbeam and the bends. We wait for the first race of the day. Pit crews prepare themselves and the ice cream man is at last doing some business. First race and off the line, Lindsay leads in Remus, the ERA. Keith Schellenberg in the Hassan Bentley. A very big car for quite a tight circuit. down into Cas Cascades and Lindsay is catching up fast. And now Lindsay's in the lead. ERAs were much in evidence, as of course was the ice cream man. Burgle in the Bugatti was moving along at a fair pace. And Schellenberg has his hands full.
you certainly wouldn't miss the fact that you were being overtaken by a giant Bentley. Lindsay goes on to win. And Burgle takes the vintage section. One Bugatti didn't quite make it to the end. Lindsay goes on to the flag. ERAs take the first three places. Lindsay comes in to get the laurel wreath from Tim Carson. And Burgle comes in for congratulations and a laurel wreath for the vintage section. And both share the lap of honour at the end of a perfect vintage day at Alton Park. Time to pack up and leave the paddock. I hope he had a vintage day too. Over to Silverstone for the vintage meeting in July. The sun shone and the paddock was full with most tasty machinery. The Bonato Hazan was there. So was the number painting lady. Briggs was there to drive Mephistopheles, the Fiat. This is quite a handful with 21 litres of power. He's got his brakes adjusted all right, but possibly too much. Light cars had their own event. A very tasty Maserati on the start line. And a complete rebuild of an Austin 7. Engine out. That looks to me as if he might be in a little bit of a rush to get to the start line. And it's at the start line that we find the starter running a handicap event. This was the club relay race. Slightly less competitive, but gives drivers an opportunity to try out the Silverstone circuit. The club is very fortunate to be able to use the Silverstone club circuit twice a year 
for its own race meeting. Drivers change over for the second half of the handicap event. So the relay race is coming to an end as a Fraser Nash crosses the line. And Briggs is towed into life in Mephistopheles. This was one of its only appearances for the year, for it was destined to end up in a museum in Italy. And during the race, it acquitted itself pretty well. There's a Lagonda on the edge, round Woodcut. Plenty to see, including a nice little spin at Woodcut. Mephistopheles again, in full flight. Take a flag out and the bucket with a little bit of cement to get rid of an oil spill. Schellenberg in the Bernardo Hassan. The start of another race. This is a scratch race with everybody off together. And it got quite competitive and quite crowded. ERAs were making the pace once again. Schellenberg is being very brave as he holds the car in a feral slide. This was one of the rare opportunities to see the Bernardo Hassan being driven in real anger. Nigel Arnold Forster in the Delage, a recent rebuild but a beautiful car. Back to the paddock after a dramatic day's racing as Dudley covers up his ERA. And with a last look at some fine cars in the paddock, we leave Silverstone for another year. And we're across to Wales, to Prestane. 
and to the railway station where we all foregather for some driving tests. This is for vintage only, no PVTs, no post-vintage thoroughbreds on the Welsh trial. Quite cold weather, but the Hampton was steaming a bit. Rolls-Royce, not competing up the hills, but doing the driving tests. Fine Mercedes. And an equally fine Bentley. There's the GN of Riddle. That is eminently suitable for mud plugging. Rolls Less so, and it's only here for the driving tests. An Edwardian Rolls Royce, a very rare collector's item. Collector's item too is the Bugatti, but used a little bit more fiercely. And as we travel down the main street in Prestain, it looks as if the world has moved back 40 years. The Radnorshire Arms are centre of activities for the weekend, and it's a very family affair. Hamish Moffat is under the Bresciu Bugatti, doing a bit of tweaking. Peter Hull, who's competition secretary in charge of the weekend. And there's one way to change a wheel. Lots of Austin 7 specials, ideally suited for mud plugging. And we're foregathered at the first hill. During the day, competitors will cover maybe 12 hills. There's somebody buying a car in installments. Hamish Moffat is away, always very competitive in the Bresciu Bugatti. And Tim Carson, club secretary, makes certain that everything works according to the clock. First hill, quite misty, but not difficult to find your way up. Light cars can compensate for lack of power by being a bit nimble. Elvis 1250 normally makes its way up the hill, but not today. The conditions are quite greasy after rain. Austin 7s have more success.
Hamish Moffat and the Bugatti. No trouble at all on Hill 1. To get up a hill you need very little tyre pressure, but then for the roads you need the pressure up again. A very nice cigato bodied Alpha finds its way halfway up, but then struggles and drops a bit of exhaust pipe. Plenty of helpers and the bits are returned to the driver. Thirty ninety eight Vauxhall has the advantage of four seats, so extra bouncers. But unfortunately, not getting to the top today. A Jowett, who doesn't seem to have any shock absorbers, has a beautiful bounce, but doesn't get much further. It was a very slimy day, but a very enjoyable day, which brought our film to an end for the club year. Last people up the last hill. And we're thinking about the winter when we may have to rebuild the motor car do a bit of fettling and prepare for the next year. 1962 had been a most successful year for the Vintage Sports Car Club and the last meeting of the year in the middle of Wales provided plenty of enjoyment for spectators and competitors alike. This traditionally is the last hill of the year, it's Smatcher. And it's a matter of honour to try and get to the top of this very difficult hill. Hamish Moffat, as ever, shows how it's done in the Bugatti and we say farewell to the club film for another year. <laughs>